This is PsychBoost, helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on development, and in this eighth GCSE video, we'll be covering Piaget's stage theory. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. Very big thank you for all of your help, guys. To join them, follow the link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So I'm guessing you're here to study GCSE psychology. Uh, so here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they'll be in red text. You need to be able to respond to questions on all of this stuff. And if you're not doing the GCSE, well, stick with us. Could be fun. Jean Piaget was a famous psychologist in the field of childhood development. And he had a theory about how children develop cognitively. Piaget thought it wasn't just that children haven't yet learned how to think about the things adults think about, but that they think in completely different ways. So, for example, adults can think logically, can see the world from others' perspective, and can think about abstract concepts. According to Piaget, children simply can't do those things, because their brains have not yet matured to a stage of cognitive development that allows those kind of thoughts. Let me quickly define two words that will be important. That's logical thinking, which is considering the relationship between facts and then coming to conclusions that make sense. So if I said I had three apples, two pears, and three sweets, then how many pieces of fruit do I have? You can quickly understand the fact that apples and pears are fruit, or sweets are not, come to the conclusion that I have five pieces of fruit. Abstract concepts are ideas that don't have any physical form, so morals, mathematics, and beauty. That's opposed to concrete concepts that you can point at, like apples. So as they grow, children do learn about the world, and Piaget suggests that they do this by developing schema. I've mentioned schema before, so you might have guessed that they're a pretty big idea in cognitive psychology. But to explain schema again, they're packages or structures of information about things in the world. We develop our schema through experience. New experiences can cause us to add to our schema, or in some cases, make an entirely new schema. And this leads us to two words about how Piaget thought children develop schema. Assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation is a small change when we add new information to an existing schema. So a child who has only had experience with their own black cat, seeing a ginger cat, will add this information to their cat schema. Cats can be black or ginger. Accommodation is the changing of the schema itself to match the new information. So a child visiting the zoo and seeing lions and tigers will need to reconsider what a cat is or make a totally new schema of big cats. Piaget broke down the cognitive development of children's brains down to four distinct stages. Firstly, sensorimotor. Between zero and two years old, babies are just first learning how to control their bodies. They're interacting with sensory information and at this stage develop object permanence, meaning they start to understand that an object still exists, even if it's hidden from view. The second stage is pre-operational. This is between two and seven years old. Children lack the ability to think logically at this stage. They don't understand conservation that the amount or volume of an object remains the same even if how it's displayed changes. They're also egocentric, meaning that they only see the world from their own perspective. Piaget demonstrated young children's inability to conserve using glasses of water. When water was poured from a wide glass into a thinner glass, children would say there was more water in the thinner glass. The third stage is concrete operational, and children at this stage from 7 to 11 years old at this stage, egocentrism is lessened, meaning they can now see the world from others' perspective. Children can also do better on tasks of conservation. They can start to use logical thinking about and using physical objects around them, but they struggle thinking logically about abstract concepts. And the final stage, formal operational, at 11 years and older, children at this stage should now be able to use logical reasoning about abstract concepts, working out mathematical and logic questions in their heads. So those are the stages of development according to Piaget. We do need to be able to consider how those stages can be applied to education. As young children are developing schema, the teaching in primary schools should be child-centered, with teachers providing interesting resources and experiences, 
but the children can develop their own schema using play, discovery and trial and error. As the children are passing through stages and might be incapable of some tasks, teachers should consider a child's readiness for some classroom challenges. Teachers could also keep in mind that children in the same class might be at different stages of cognitive development, so there should be a range of appropriate classroom activities available. So let's evaluate Piaget. His work has undeniably been influential. It's been applied to early education in many countries, with teachers focusing less on rote learning and more on discovery. Children are asked to complete tasks based on readiness and encouraged to develop their own schema. But there are criticisms of Piaget. The stages suggested by Piaget don't match the development of all children. He thought all children would achieve the formal operational stage. But some people are never able to use logical reasoning to think abstractly. And also shown by research we're about to cover, Piaget seems to have underestimated children's abilities. It's thought that some of the original methods used by Piaget were a bit confusing to the children. And there are issues with Piaget's sample. They were all middle class children from Switzerland. It's likely that his findings lack generalizability to childhood development in other cultures and social classes, who may pass through the stages at different points or have other identifiable stages. So I mentioned research that counters Piaget's work. The first one to look at is the Naughty Teddy study by McGarrell and Donaldson. We just covered conservation, understanding that quantity remains the same even when how it's displayed changes. And I gave the example of pouring water between glasses. While in a variation, Piaget used counters. He moved a set of counters closer together and the children often said that there were fewer counters. While McGarrigal and Donaldson thought that the children seeing you intentionally moving the counters and then asking if the number of counters had changed sets the children up to say that they had. In other words, the children's behaviour was influenced by the actions of the researcher, so not valid. So they decided to set up a similar study, but instead of the researcher moving the counters, a naughty teddy would do it accidentally. They used 80 children, all between 4 and 6, from Scottish nurseries and primary schools. In one condition, the experimenter moved the counters closer intentionally, and in another, the naughty teddy accidentally moved them. The researchers found that when the experimenter moved the counters, only 13 children, 16%, were able to conserve, but in the naughty teddy condition, 50 children, or 63%, were able to conserve and answered correctly that there were the same numbers of counters. So the researchers concluded that Piaget influenced the behaviour of the children in his original study and then underestimated young children's ability to conserve. So when we come to evaluate McGarrigal and Donaldson, a positive is they successfully challenged a pre-existing view on the limitations of children's cognitive development based on Piaget's ideas. Their study has also been replicated by other researchers. However, the results were not quite as strong as the original Naughty Teddy study. However, 30% of children were still unable to conserve in the Naughty Teddy condition. This shows that a large number of children do struggle with conservation until seven. This is partial support for Piaget's theories. The sample used in the Naughty Teddy study were all from a range of Scottish nurseries. It could be a variation in early years education between the nurseries could have influenced the results. Now, Piaget's ideas on the development of egocentricity has also been challenged by Hughes in the Policeman Doll study. Piaget showed that pre-operational children struggle to decenter with the Free Mountain study. He sat children down in front of a three-dimensional model of free mountains, with a doll on the other side. When asked to pick from images what the doll could see, younger children picked the image with their view, and older children picked the image with the doll's view. But Hughes thought that the free mountains task was confusing to young children, and made them appear more egocentric than they actually were. So we designed a study to test Piaget's theory with a more understandable social context. 30 children between three and five years old were shown a model of two walls forming a cross. Two dolls were used, a policeman doll and a boy doll. The experimenter placed the policeman doll on one side so he could see into two of the sections of the wall. The experimenter then placed the boy doll, asking each time if the policeman doll could see him. In the second part of the experiment, the researcher used two policeman dolls and asked the child to place the boy doll 
in the section where the policeman dolls couldn't see him. The results were 90% of the children could successfully hide the boy doll from both of the policeman dolls. Hughes concluded from these results that the Free Melton studies was poorly designed and young children are less egocentric than previously thought. So when evaluating Hughes, we can say his study also successfully countered ideas developed by Piaget on the limitations of young children's cognitive abilities. But we can be concerned with investigator effects in this study. It may be that the researcher unintentionally gave hints about the correct response. Also, the study had more than one stage. So it might have been that the child was being trained to answer correctly. Both of these issues could reduce the study's internal validity. It may not have measured egocentrism, but the effects of practice and the investigator. Now that we've covered the content, you need to be able to use all that information to actually answer questions. So here are five questions I've made for you to test your skills. So pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together a short bonus video talking you through how to answer these properly. For everybody else, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video on development, the effects of learning.